in progress. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, we're going to do a session on file importing and exporting. My Zoom camera, for some reason, isn't turning on, but I can share the screen, so that's what I'm doing. I have copied the file that's in our file input and output over. Uh, some of this other stuff's worth watching. Uh, you can see uh, Red's version of what's going on. This is me. So let's get back to my Zoom right here. Oh. Close that other one. I have included person because I wanted to maybe incorporate that in today's lecture. Uh, the big new addition that we have is the include f stream. Include f stream is include the file stream. Okay. I've got person here. We're going to use it later. I've copied some of the stuff that, uh, like, I copied the generate person that we had from our hash bucket or our hash table list with objects so that we could like, speed a little bit stuff up later on. Uh, everything else has just been commented out. Let's see what happens when we run it and we'll look through the code. What is going on? It's doing something. I comment out something that needs to be. Oh, I opened a file that isn't there anymore. I changed the name and didn't change this name. I like CSI rocks. Uh, let's see. So, what happens is we have we did the include file or f stream, and OF stream is the output file stream. So output file stream, and then there's going to be an IF stream later on, input file stream. Uh, you got to give it a name because everything needs a variable. Uh, so our access to our output file stream is going to go by my file for this one. And you have to open the file. Now let's go take a look and see where this, it, it will create a file if it doesn't exist. If you want to see where it's at, you can go to Solution Explorer, and you can like right click on this and say uh, "Open Folder in File Explorer," and we can go see where it's at. Uh, this is in my CSCL2 lectures under today's video, so I got a long name for it. Sometimes there's a debug file listed here. Mine says x64. Uh, it is not in the debug file, it's in the other one. So this is the one named after what you're doing. And notice it generated the file. I did not have that beforehand. And if we open it up, we can look and it says line one in file, line two in file, line three in file. Uh, I strongly recommend you close this out each time you're done looking at it because you cannot write to a file that is open. Okay. That's important to know. So let's come back over here to our source code. Uh, you need to open the file, close the file. Uh, let's see. Does this add to the file or overwrite the file? Let's check. Uh, let's change these lines right here. Maybe this is awesome. One is awesome too. I ordered a new mouse. Hopefully it's fucking better. Should be here today. Red is sort of awesome. And I'm going to run it again. And what that has right there, it says David is awesome, one is awesome, two. Red is sort of awesome. What we did is we opened the file, we wrote to it, we closed it, and then the IF stream is the input file stream. I went and reopened it. And... 
we've got this string variable here. And we had while mile file to is not end of file. EOF is end of file. Oh, that's what I, I had it there already. Uh, we do the get line and we see it out. Now we can go look at it. I had it open still. It's right here. So I can open this up and note that it overwrites. It does not add to. Okay. So it's important. That's a very important to note. The outputting to a file overwrites. Basically clears the file and overwrites it. And starts anew, effectively overwriting it. Uh, we have these slash ends here. Take a look what happens if we don't. The input file stream is going to show. So look at that. It put it all on one line. So we have those. Uh, so slash n works for creating the next line. Does n line. Let's take a look. N line works as well. So what you're used to for going to the screen also does the same for outputting to a file. Okay. You got to make sure you close it after when you're done with it. Uh, let's see what I want to do here. Let's maybe take a look at doing an Excel file and saving it. So an Excel file, if you want to do like an Excel file, let's come back up here to output file stream. Uh, we did that file. Let's create another one. OF stream. Uh, my Excel. And we will open my Excel. God, we need to do a CSV file. And not my file, my Excel. And so we'll do like my Excel and see what happens when we see stuff out to it. Let's just run it. Oh, I need to close the file. So I always set that close up. Doesn't do anything. Okay, that ran the program. Now I gotta go look in my file directory. And I do have a my Excel. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna edit this. Uh, let's put, we like having some people in there. So I'll put my name and my age. Uh, we got Voldemort, 18, Juan is 20. I'll click save and it's you need to close that each time to make sure that you can access it uh, 
it's important to note how my Excel files work. Properties. It has, oh good, it's saved as a CSV. If it's not, oh, I created it as a CSV, so it had to be that way. Uh, if you try to do a regular Excel file, it's not the right thing. Uh, so you're going to want to save it in an Excel file. I'm going to open this in Notepad to see how it saves the data. So let's see what it looks like in, in, in that. So it looks like it does, the columns are separated by commas and rows are separated by rows. That's important to note. So if you have your own Excel file, like these are the scores from the Calc 1 exam, this file here, uh, file, save a copy. I'm going to get, it's an XLSX. It's proprietary. I don't think we're going to be able to open that. Uh, but I'm going to go look. Let's see what we can do. Let's see if we can figure, you know, is there a way to hack into it? I'm going to save a copy here. In there. That's where our, my folder is. Save it. Yeah, Calc one file a box control. Let's just make that shorter name. And that was an XLSX. And it's just a single column. So, can we upload that? Can I come down here and say, let's open that file? It's called, is it capital C? Does it matter? Okay, I did capitalize it. Top one exam three dot it's an XLSX file. Now let's see what happens if I try to run that. I get jargon. Excel is proprietary, so it doesn't work the way we want it to. So if we wanted to do something with it, what we gotta do is you need to save it as a CSV, comma delimited. Okay, I'm going to delete the Excel one so it's not in there. Just have that one. And now it's a CSV. Let's come in here and take a look. If I change it to a CSV, will it work for me? It's still got a little junk at the beginning. See that? We still got a little junk here. So that's, it's an artifact of Excel. If you create the CSV file, because when we had the other CSV file, my Excel CSV doesn't have that. My Excel CSV I made on my own. I made it here. And it does not have that little artifact on it. Uh, so if you don't want that artifact there, you need to create the CSV by yourself. But we know it's just does columns, comma, or columns are separated by commas. So, like, let's 
Let's see what do I want to do. Let's let's like push in. I don't want to do testing. Let's do what I said, David. Comma forty eight. Morta, comma eighteen, one, comma twenty. I closed it and then I open it again down here and see what it looks like. Okay, here it shows exactly what I typed, but now we can go look at the file that we created. and it has those columns. It does not say, like if I open the, the notice I'm widening up the file or the column to make it so Voldemort's full name appears. It doesn't save file for or the file formatting like that. It just saves the data. So, What? Right, make sure you close it. Don't say it doesn't matter. Uh, what if we wanted to do do stuff with this? So, like, let's say I wanted to uh, store these. Okay, so I'm going to comment those out because that, that Excel file is already created. Uh, we're going to come down here. This is where we opened it up. It's got our names. So how can I take that information and maybe store it in a vector? So I got a vector string up here. Let's make a vector int for the ages. So maybe we'll change this to, uh, my, this down here uses minus, no it doesn't. Yeah, we're just gonna change it. I'm gonna call it uh, my names, or names. And let's have a vector int for ages. So what we want to do is pull the names and ages out and put them into vectors. So that, that's the goal we're doing right now. Oop. Current objective. We have David 48. Voldemorta 18 and 120 saved in a file, saved in a CSV. Let's extract the data from that and store it in a vector and store it in the appropriate vectors. This is called string parsing because it saves it as a string. So we are going to pull apart the string basically. Uh, so what can we do? Uh, well, like we've got to, we've got to pull in the string one at a time. So this, this pulls in the string one at a time. This is going to save the, Whatever we pulled in is saved here. So the first loop through, loop through, we'll pull in David, comma, 48. And let's go make it, let's go, let's go look at that Excel file again. I'm going to look at it as a notepad again. 
It does have spacing in there. I don't know if the spacing affects it. We're going to find out. Make sure you close them when you're working with that, that IDE, because otherwise it won't open it and work with it. So what we want to do is be able to pull the name out and the age out, and it's separated by a comma. So can we do something with that? Like this is an array of characters. Uh, what, let's go look at our C plus uh, plus. Let's do like, is there a fine thing for string or fine character in string? String find. Search the string for the first occurrence of the sequence specified by its arguments. So when POS is specified, otherwise, so what does it return? So string, let's look at their example. There are two needles in the haystack. Search for string two. The string two is here. Uh, found equals string find needle. So what does... First needle found at 14. One, that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, oh, zero to 14, okay. So it's returning the position of where it starts. So we can do that with ours right here. Let's do that with ours right here. Uh, let's create a temporary integer. Come in here and we'll say temp equals string var dot find. And we want it to find the comma. We're just going to run it and see what it looks like. Home found a negative one. Why is my Excel's fucking clear now? What happened? Oh, I opened it up. Yeah, I opened it up here and then I closed it up here and overwrote it. So I'm going to leave those active. Let's try this again. So comma found at 5. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Bola Morta is found at 10. 1 is found at 4. Comma found at negative 1. I wonder what it it's doing, there's an extra line here at the end, isn't there? So when we, this final end line is actually, this final end line is creating a blank new line. So maybe we don't want this final end line here. Let's just do that. So we don't have that common negative one thing going on. Okay. So it's saying it where we found it. So uh, there's some other commands that we can do with this. 
Uh, if you're unfamiliar with strings substring, it's worth checking out. This is where we can strip shit out of a string. So like string substring three comma five. This is the zero position, one position, two position. Three, four, five should be THI. So it sees out THI. No, it didn't. Oh, it tells that it's not three to five, it's three and then how many characters to do it. Okay. Which is what I would have set up here if I just fucking read it. Position and then length. So maybe let's change what we've got a new desk. Let's not call it temp, let's call it position. Hopefully that's not a fucking mute word. Doesn't seem to have a problem. I don't need that anymore. I just wanted to see how that works. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that string substring. So do I have a couple names? I've got user string one and age input. Let's use those. Let's use user string one for the name. And then we've got age input here. Okay, so user string user string one is gonna do string bar and it's gonna do that substring and we want it to start at position. No, we want it to start at zero and go up to position. That should strip off the name. And then age input equals string bar. And we don't want it to start a position because position is comma. We want it to start at position plus one. And then maybe go to uh, string bar size. Minus one, that gets us to the end. And it doesn't like it because this is going to return a string and we're doing, I want an integer. So there's a couple ones that we can use. I know of Stoy, but like if you're not sure, let's just go look it up. Convert string to integer. Toy versus a toy. Let's let's take a look at those. Toy is legacy. Toy is the way to go. Toy works for both C plus plus strings. Toy can take up to three parameters. Interesting. The second premise for starting index and the third premise for the base of the input number. Now we just want regular shit. So what we're going to do is we're going to cast this to an integer using stoy. And then what we want to do is, this is not the best way to do it because I'm not trying to illustrate it. We've got our names and ages vectors. Names and ages. And we're going to push back user string one. 
and ages will push back age input. That should store them all then we wanna like let's let's do a for loop and look through our vector. See what do we want to do? Oh, uh, for loop. I equals zero. I less than. Uh, names dot size. I plus plus. We can do a C out of names dot at i ages dot at i I'm going to comment out this line right here so that it doesn't show up so I want my C out to only be the stuff above. I think this is gonna grab what we're looking for and print it to screen. So we're we're creating David, Voldemort, Juan. We'll store them in the Excel, the CSV. We're gonna open a CSV file. I already know what the contents are. Uh, and this is gonna help us find, you know, take a look at it. Let's see what we get. So we were able to extrapolate name and age from that. So this is like pulling information from a database. So I knew what the database was, but what if I didn't? What if we didn't create it right here? Well, we just come up in here and, oh, I don't want you. Edit this bad boy right here. I don't want to do it that way. I want to do it with Excel. So let's add some more stuff. Uh, James Bond. And we'll have, I don't know, 35. Uh, John Redden. He's got to be old as fuck right now, right? How old do you guys think John is? I don't know, 50, 52? No, 51. He's not playing, playing with quite a full deck. That's what I'm going to go with right there. Uh, Lunar is my puppy. He's one. Angie, I'm going to lie about her age. She's 29. We will save that. Close this. And now we are not writing to that file. Let's see, we close all that out now. Let me leave that open. We're just opening it up and gonna run it and it should still work. Oh, where did we mess up?
Is it not lacking in its spaces? Let me shut this down. Let's do this. Let me hit pause real quick. Okay, so what I did is I added a temporary variable just to see I could, so I could see where it's going, what's going wrong. Uh, let's go look at our data set real quick. We've got seven names in here. I'm going to put spaces back in. I don't think the spaces were it. Shouldn't have been the spaces. And now when I run it, and I look at my output, it does zero to seven. I didn't have seven. I only had zero to seven is eight different things. So it's going through and doing more than I want. So let's just end that and let's come in here. There we go, over here. Uh, I'm I'm doing too much. So maybe let's add in uh, if string var does not equal the empty string. Let's try that. That way we don't include that final string. There we go, that did it. Excellent. So that's worth noting. And Excel file saved an empty string at the end, empty line at the end. So this prevents us from trying to parse that. Okay. So that's that. We've got it. So we've got it pulling from a file. Uh, let's look at like pushing it to a file. I want to do this. Let's see. We've got persons. So let's let's use that one. What comes in the person class? We need a first name, a last name, a gender, and age. So let me come grab this. And uncommon it. I'll cut it. I'll bring it up top.
Okay, so that's got us pulling in information and what are we doing with it? Nothing with it so far. So here we got our vector. Let's let's push back me. Okay, I'm going to comment that out for now, just running with those two. Ooh, look at that, that's neat. So, I'm going to comment all of this out too. Let's do the ones that are there. It's this mouse. I have to like hold the but I can't just click it. I have to do a hard press to do it right. Okay, so what we're doing is we've got the output file stream. We're gonna use my file there. How do we want to do this? We want to push back. My file. Uh, dot open. We need to open one. My file dot open. Let's call it my my folks. Oops. CSV. And I'm gonna close it real quick. That way I don't forget to close it. And what we want to do is, what are the names of these things? We've got first name, last name, gender, age. So that's what we're going to push back in that order. So they're called, I'm going to just make a quick note here. First name, last name, gender, age. Okay. So we want to do my file. And what we're pushing in, what is our, it's my peeps. Let's just do the first person. Let's do me. Let's just do me first. So I'm going to push back me dot first, get first name. And then I need to put in a comma. And I'm going to do me dot get last name. And then I need to push in a comma. And then you do me dot gender, get gender. Push in a comma. And then I'm going to do me dot get age. And pushing an end line. Oh, do I need to have these? I need to have that. We knew I was going to do that. I'm going to come over here and check out the file. Bam.
So maybe we want to see. Can I edit this? Ah, we're just trying to push it back. Uh, well, yeah, I want to edit this. Copy this. Fucking mouse. Get it doing a piece of shit. Control C, comment that out. I'm going to just call this my file three because I got a my file two down below. My file three is my folks. So how do we find the bet the second comma? Let's go back and look at that. So it tells us. When position is specified, it only includes characters after that position. So we can we can add that to that. Notice they have oh, they specified how many characters they want. Is that what the second, that third one is? Position then n. What is n here? Length of sequence of characters match. So I don't need all that. I just need to say. So let's see. I'm going to go with int pause one, pause two, pause three. And we'll call this pause one. Because we got three commas in there. So I need the spot for three commas. So user stream, let's find all of these real quick. Pause one is that, and then pause two is gonna be string var dot find. We're looking for it to find the comma. And we want it to start after pause one plus one. And pause three should be the same as pause two, except we start after pause two plus one. String two equals string bar substring. We're going from pause one plus one up to pause two. And this one's actually doing it pause three. And then our gender input. Is a boolean. Pause two plus one up to pause three. Is there a string to boolean? Oh. 
so extreme to Boolean. Do this in memory. Oh, that makes sense. Convert it to an integer first. Convert it to an integer and then hit it with a Boolean. Let's try that. So here we want to convert this to an integer. And then I want to convert that. That might be enough. It's only going to be zero or one. And now I don't want to push that back. So what I want to do is I got my, I got my, my peeps vector here. So nothing is getting pushed into it right now. What we're going to do is we're going to push in people from that we pull in from our thing right here. So it was my peeps. New person. I need to do a pushback. Person. We are doing user string one, user string two, gen input, full or age input. And this is my file three. And here we want my peeps. So we got to change this line here quite a bit. Oh no, we got a display one for this. My peeps. We need to, it's a pointer, so maybe we need to dereference my piece. Not be that dereference. Let's give it a try. Okay, so this is taking and pulling apart. This is passing in get first name, get last. So we're passing in a person. We're storing it in the file. Let's do two. 
We got me and not me up above. So let's just do add this for both of them. Let's store two people. Okay, and then we open it. So we write. Who do? Who did I have? Me and Jonah Jameson. So we're writing them. We're opening the fi output file stream. Oh, that's this output file stream. We're going to write it to the myfolks.csv. Remember, it overwrites it. We're storing it as something that a CSV will use as comma separated. Uh, then we're going to open the file. We are going to pull each line one out at a time, find all the commas. I should say POS3. Find all the commas and use them. So the name, first name is from zero to position one. Uh, position one plus one to position two was last name. Position two plus one to position three is gender. And position three plus one till end is age. And then we're going to we store all those and we're going to push them back. This should have two people in it. My peep should have two people in it here. Then this is going to go through. We close the file, and then we've got two people in our vector. This should show us who's in the vector. Ah! Oh. Why is it? What does my display look like? Because that looks funny. See out, get last name, comma, get first name. It's not doing that. It did see out, get last name, comma. So, is it storing Jones 148 as the last name? That might be what it's doing. Let's come up here and look. Maybe what, maybe what I thought I was doing here did not work. So, what we're going to do is we're going to see out each of these. I wish it would quit deleting that, long, that last thing when I do that. See out user string 1. See how it uses string two. See how gen input. See how age input. Yeah. Oh, I see what it's doing. So second name is not going to position two. It's it's just going till end of line. So something in my code is off. Why is position why is the rest of them doing it right? So that is, that's gender, that's age. Why is it not recognizing the comma there? We're only looking for one character, so maybe let's just throw in a one. The next one was length, right? We're only looking for the one. Uh, 
I didn't do it. Let's go back and look at the fine. Turning this is There are two needles in this haystack with needle. What is going on with this? Needles are small. It's only looking for the first six letters of this. It's only looking for a needle. Looking for the first occurrence of the sequence specified by its arguments. When position is specified, the search only includes characters at or after position, including any possible occurrences that include characters ignoring any. And then when you add, so what are the parameters on that? So what's wrong in my code? It's not stopping at position two. I don't think this comma thing did anything. Just said, find the care. This is only one already. I start that at two. Still recording Joan one four comma one comma forty eight as the full last name. It's making a mistake here. No, it's not making a mistake here. It's making it when we assign it right here. It's what I've got listed for substring. This is this is the mistake line. Let's make sure it's seeing out what we are getting what we think it is. Uh, we will have it. See yeah, how pause one. Two. Uh, so that's all we need.
So it's doing 5, 11, 13, and 13, 15 for Jonah. They have the same length, and the last name is what's making it go longer. And that, that's right. So it's in it's in substring. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. It's doing like I'm doing it wrong in my head. I'm doing like a start and a stop, and it's not. Substring is a start and a length. That's the problem. So, the problem is the user side. So it's a start and a length. That one works fine there. On this one, the length should be POS2 minus POS1. That should just be a one. Oh, I need another one for the story. Yeah. POS two minus POS one should give us the length of POS two. This is the last name. Let's do the comma. So I need POS2 minus POS1 minus 1. I'm missing an extra one. <laughs> Look at that. All right. Let's get rid of these. We don't need those anymore. There we go. So now... So the string parsing it takes some work. Uh, but we got it here. So we've got this. I could turn on uh so let's uncomment that. And now we can do a response where we get people, put them in, and uh store it to a file and see what happens let's let's do this i think we've got we showed string parsing going in string parsing going out so i'm already added a list john jameson's all already added to the list let's add voldemorta her last name is badass beat uh she is a female and she's 18. yes uh, we got one. I think it automatically capitalized names. He's a male and he's 20. I want to say we, uh, his younger brother, brother was Kenny. Kenny was 12. Uh, this was last week. I don't fucking remember this shit. Oh, I didn't actually push the person back. What's going on here? Okay, let's try this again. I gotta take these and push these. Eh. I actually have this line already. Why am I gonna do it again? No, I don't. So we're doing it right here. 
new person, we're pushing back. Uh, user string one, user string two. Thought I did have this somewhere. Student input and age input. Oh, I'm not pushing shit back here. So this is where, this is what, oh, okay, this is what we want to change. We want to do, we want to do a for loop. Let's come down and grab my quick for loop here. And we're doing my file. We're pushing back uh, my peeps. At I dot get first name. And I want to push back the comma. And if I don't do an end line, it will keep it all on the same line. So this might make it easier for me to keep track of what I'm doing. And I can speed this up by copying this a few times. I don't need that anymore. I don't need that anymore. I don't need that anymore. We're changing that to get last name. Gender and get age. And here we're pushing back an end line. I'm going to do this. I'm going to say if. I does not equal my peeps dot size. Then I'm going to push back an end line. That way it doesn't do that final end line and make a new line in the program. That should take the people that we generate up here so we're prompting the user for names we're storing the people we're going to push them into the output stream uh, so it should save everything in the file that we want and then here this is just us un unwrapping it and, and, and parsing it out later so Badass B. That's enough. Why is it doing a C out twice? Do I have a C out going on twice? Or is it saved? Is it in there twice? No, it's only in there once, but everything's saved just the way I want it. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that fucking beautiful? That's sexy. That's sexy, I tell you. So, what's wrong with my code? Why is it printing twice?
Well, we'll see if it's printing before it gets here. By just seeing out J and in J plus plus. Did all of those here. So it's after that. Zero, one, two, three, four is showing what it's after. It's after the completion of this while loop. Which means it's here. Why is that running twice? It's quite literally running twice. Oh, because I'm at it. Motherfucker. Here I put him in up here. Uh, let's, let's make a my peeps too also. That's what it is. I'm fucking, I added them all to the list here, so the vectors in the list here, and then down here, I'm uh, pushing them back. Let's push them back to my peeps too. And here we'll do my peeps too. That's the problem. One seventeen. Oh, didn't get rid of that. All right, let's change the order that we're putting the name in. Fucking hell. So these two I added already by hand or in the program. Then we added those four people. Oh, look at that. So we've got data management going on live. So this sequence right here. So what we got here is we're reading a table from CSV file. I should probably, to make it better, not do a one here, but do uh, POS3 minus POS2. Minus one, because that way I, we're relying on gen. Well, no, it's it's got gender, so like I'm very much forcing this to be a person containing persons. And you, whatever, like if you had a database and and you're building a, a database of people, you know exactly which files or, or what entries are going to be. There's probably a social security number. There might be an ID number. Uh, 
so this section, that's what exactly what all this is doing. We met that objective right there. And delete that. This went through and parsed through everything. I don't need that right there. Doing that allows us to do avoid an empty file at the end. Here we are. So here we extracted all the data from the string or the, the string in the table in the CSV file. And we are populating a new person or instantiating, I guess is what it's called. Instantiating a new person. At runtime, pushing them into our person spec. So this is way if you like you, this is what, probably what happens behind the scenes of maybe not Excel but like other data management systems. You literally load the file up load up the entire file then make the edits you want and then do the output file stream afterwards so you would lead with loading the data table doing the operations you wanted like adding new people here and then outputting it to the file stream, shoving it all back into the data system. Now, this is just beginning C++. There's more to it because there, there's live stuff. People can do work in the database at the same time usually. So there's got to be a way to do it live. But that's beyond the scope of this class. Got this going more into go deeper. If you want to be a computer science major, dig deeper down that hole when you transfer. Uh, other than that, that That'll wrap up what we're doing here. If you got any questions, let me know. Peace.